Hi there, it's Paul in Perth here, and I'm guessing you've found this video because you've tried to get the piston to go back on a rear brake caliper, and you've hit a problem, and I'm here to solve it for you because it's something that's actually not quite obvious. What I've got here set up for you is a brake caliper out of a BL Master 3 that I've stripped down, including removing the rubber boot off the piston, and I've got one here that is actually complete. So let's firstly talk through how, how it works when it's complete, and then I'll show you the way that the piston comes out and goes back, and then we'll do it for real on this one here. So it's so this is the brake caliper part here. The brake rotor sits in between the pads and the pads squeeze together and they squeeze onto the, whoops, they squeeze onto the um, metal of the brake rotor and that's what slows your car down. So as these wear out, so if I just pop one of these out for you. Okay, so you can see that part there is the pad itself and that, that is the metal backing plate. So as they wear out, the pad part gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And when they really wear out, you hear a really loud, high-pitched squelching noise because what's happening is the metal of the backing plate is rubbing on the metal of the rotor and you get a really horrible metal-on-metal -metal sound, okay? Now, they're called a caliper and you might know that there's a different product called a caliper as well. This is called a vernier caliper. And you'll notice that it has the same type of action going on as the brake caliper. So the brake caliper is squeezing together like that, and a vernier caliper is squeezing together in exactly the same way. Now the vernier caliper is used for measuring distances. A brake caliper is used for slowing down a car. But just get it in your mind that what a caliper is, is something that pulls apart and squeezes together, okay? That is what a caliper is. Now, on front brakes, you, you may have even uh, replaced front pads before, and all you did was you put a G-clamp on and you were able to squeeze that brake piston back into the body. And on front brake pads, that is perfect. On rear brake pads, when you try it, you'll find it won't work. And I just want to talk you through that. So have a really good look at this rear brake piston, and you'll notice that there are two little holes there. That's on the BL Master 3. On other models, you might see some of them have a cross, other, others have um, two sort of triangles cut out of them. But one way or the other, there will be some way to get a tool in there. Now, what I'm gonna do, this one is fully in at the moment, and I'm gonna show you how to get them out. So if you just watch sideways, I'll just reposition myself. So have a look at where that is in relationship to the body. And I'm going to bring it out, which means I need to spin it anti-clockwise. So I'm putting my needle nose pliers into those two holes. And I'm going to go anti-clockwise. Can you see how that's coming out? And it's actually coming out quite rapidly. Okay, did you see that? Right, and that is all the way out. Now, you would think that if you rotate it anti-clockwise to get it out, you'd rotate it clockwise to get it back in. Watch what happens when I go clockwise. Absolutely nothing happens. It doesn't go back in. And that is by design, okay? So the reason I think you probably found this video is you either tried to rotate that clockwise and nothing happened, or you grabbed a G-clamp and clamped it and you found nothing happened. And I'm here to tell you the trick. The trick is these are engineered so that you need to do both at the same time to get that piston to retract. So let me, there, Mazda do have a proper tool that you can buy off Mazda to do it. I wanna show you the way to do it with home tools. So the way to do it with home tools is you need compressional force and we're gonna get the compressional force with a G-clamp and you need rotational force, and we're gonna do the rotational force with a vice grip. So firstly, let's apply the compressional force. So I'm gonna grab my G-clamp, and I'm going to 
put it on tightly through the middle of that piston. Okay, can you see that? So I've got it on tightly on the middle of the piston. Now I can tighten that up all I want. It will not push the piston back in. But watch what happens when I leave that compressional force and I apply rotational force. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put my vice grips around the outside edge of that piston and I'm gonna rotate clockwise, right? One, two, and guess what? My G-clamp is now loose because it's gone in a little bit. So I have to tighten my G-clamp up a little bit. Hang on, just let me reposition that. Okay, so I tighten the G-clamp up again. I then grab my, my vice grips. One, two, check it out. My G-clamp is now so loose it's fallen off. So I have to tighten it up again. Actually, that's all the way back in. I've got no, no further to go. So I only had to do that about, what was that, four rotations? And that piston is now all the way back in. So that's the trick. You need to apply compressional force at the same time as you apply rotational force. Now, just so that you know that it's not as easy as I showed you just then, you might remember that I have taken off the rubber boot, which means I had a lot of metal to grab. So let's have a look at a real one that hasn't had the rubber removed and we'll do it on one with the rubber in it, okay? So just for ease of, um, ease of work, I'll see if I can actually get the carrier out and we'll just deal with the backing plate. Right, so that's that out. That's the carrier out. Okay, so you can see here, this is the same as that, except this one has the rubber boot and that one doesn't because I deliberately cut that one off to show you. So now we're gonna do it. This is what the one on your car looks like. So let's do it with the difficulty level of how it's gonna be in your car. So same thing, we're gonna start off the same. We're gonna apply our G-clamp to get our compressional force. So there's our G-clamp on to get our compressional force. Now you'll notice I've only actually got this little thin edge. So if you come in close, you can see I've only actually got this little silver edge here to work on. If, if I was, for example, to put my vice grips on there, I would pinch the rubber and I would tear the rubber. So what I need to do is very carefully put the vice grips just on that last piece. And then it looks like I need to tighten up my vice grips a little bit. Okay, it's there, all right? So can you see there, I'm on the metal part, but I'm not on the rubber part. That's the added complexity of doing it in the real world. And again, I'm just going to rotate one and rotate two. My G-clamp is now loose, so I have to tighten that up. And by the way, I don't know if you saw that, but it's, it's popped a little bit of brake fluid out of the brake line. Um, which means, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned this. In your car, you're going to need to take the cap off your brake fluid reservoir in your engine bay. And my advice is either to use a teaspoon and teaspoon some brake fluid out, or put a um, put a cloth in underneath the black brake fluid reservoir. Because as you saw there, some brake fluid did pop out of there and land on my lovely dining table. Um, what's going to happen for you is it's gonna push the brake fluid all the way back to the reservoir in the engine bay. And if enough of it gets pushed backwards, it will overflow and start to just spew out in your engine bay. It's better that you either teaspoon some out first or put a cloth there to catch it, okay? All right, so let's go back to, back to this. So I've tightened up my um, G-clamp again. I'm going to rotate it again and 
you'll even see some fluid pop out of there because remember, I'm pushing that piston back, right? So as I rotate, you'll see some fluid will probably pop out of there. See that? Can you see the fluid popping out of there? All right, that's one. That's two, and by the way, that's getting easier to turn. So I'd say um, that piston is freeing up. Tighten it up a bit. You can see that the brake fluid is coming out again. I've probably only got to do it one more time and that'll be fully compressed. One. Two, all right, that's pretty close to fully compressed. You can tell when they are fully compressed because the rubber boot starts to get level um, with, with the back there. That's probably got two more turns that'll be complete. Um, but between you and me, I don't want to spew out any more brake fluid onto my dining table. Um, so that's, that's, that's the secret. So the secret is you need compressional force and rotational force. You can either get the specialist tool from Mazda or you can use a G-clamp and, um, and a vice grip. Uh, uh, to get it out but not in, you can do it with needle nose pliers. So that's basically it. So that's how you do it. If you've enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and comment, and leave me some leave me some lovely comments, okay? Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm battling cancer at the moment, and I'm really surviving on the good comments that you guys are leaving me. So please don't be afraid to say something nice to me. I would really appreciate it. And if you can take the opportunity to teach this to someone else that you know, that makes me feel really good because that whole idea that I've taught you and that you've taught someone else um, gives me that feeling inside like I'm really making a difference and I'm the, the lessons that I'm leaving to the world are sticking around and, and going beyond my life and I find that really awesome, okay? Thanks from Paul in Perth. See you later.